Mmm, good day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Mage Knight. We're getting into the real last couple of stages of this game. There's not a lot left to do. Uh, now, what I've really discovered is playing Dungeon Lords on my YouTube channel is it doesn't have a very exciting ending, unfortunately, because it kind of just peters out. When you play Volcair or Tesla or a conquest scenario, you have these huge big city fights at the end, but not so much in this. Now, when you play this uh, scenario in real life, in multiplayer, competitive multiplayer, it's sort of like a race, the way I've been doing it, and it's kind of worked out the way we normally go. So you race to complete as much of the map as possible, and we've basically got everything except for five locations. There's one, two, three well there's only three locations left isn't there there's not many locations the point is we've almost completed the map but we've still got a whole day to play left now what usually happens in my competitive games is that we spend the next day fighting amongst ourselves taking over each other's sites trying to maximize our scores i'm not going to play that round i'm just going to end the game after this night uh, and just do it like a race, which is actually how I play a lot of my multi-hand solo, is it just a, a straight points race. Kind of, I, th I think of it like a racing game. So, yeah, uh, that's the situation. So let's get into it, Yablamo. He's drawing to seven cards because he's actually in a city. And when you're in a city, if you are the leader, you get plus two. Otherwise, you get plus one. Now, because there is one shield for each person on the city no one is a def defined leader so it's plus one only so he draws to seven and we're trying to max my points here so we want to heal all wounds because they're like negative two for each one i believe it is where is it over here yeah so it's negative two for each uh wound plus it's minus three for the most now we know that the the red chick's going to win the minus three, but it's still good to get rid of it. So what we're going to do now, though, is actually try and buy a unit, which we should be able to do. We have got a cloak of shielding. We also have four, uh, three influence here. So if we tap that and spend this, that is six influence, because this thing here is worth three influence when you discard it. So the way these things work is the idea is that they're they're like trophies of your, you know, uh, heroic deeds. So when you're interacting with locals, they feed off your fame and you can get extra fame by showing them your trophies or you can actually gain influence with them by, you know, that's the thematics of it anyway. But the point is we now have six already, six uh, already, plus we are plus two. So we're actually plus two. So we're actually at eight. Now what we're trying to do is pick up this guy who costs 13. So we now have six, seven, eight. And we've got nothing that actually produces influence. Shapeshift does not allow us to produce influence. So that's eight, nine, uh, nine 10, 11, 12, 13. So if we just do that, so that's five cards, that's five, plus six is 11, plus the two from our rep is 13. We have hired this unit. Blamo. Okay. And that is that. Over here, we're drawing to six. Again, we don't really have a lot to do here. Flip hits and uh, heal that wound. And basically, there's nothing he can do. There's nothing he really needs to do. What he needs to do, I guess, is maximize his score. And there's nothing really to do that. I mean, if he could get to here, he could buy... Oh, he might be able to get to here. That's actually quite hard to get to. It's uh, five to get through there, isn't it? So it's three, eight, ten. So it's ten to get to there. And the reason why is that there's points for having the most action cards and you can buy these action cards. So 
You can get meditation. He's already used his flight. Now if we use meditation, we can pick out this thing that'll give us five movement. But the thing is, if we look, we've used one move, two move, three move, four move, plus our bought move. So we've used all our move cards. So really there's nothing for us to do except gain crystals. You do get points for having crystals at the end, the greatest loot. So we may as well get some of that. So let's do bam. It gives us a white and I'm going to go two like that. And that is going to move oh, three, beg your pardon. Oop, oop, what am I doing? Uh, pressing so many buttons. I can't tell what I'm doing. Actually, I'm not going to do that. Then I'm going to do this, take blue. And that is going to give us, we'll use that to take a blue mana. And then I will put this back in my hand and discard this card. Boom. And we'll just generate crystals till the end of the turn, basically. Now, third player, he's drawing a six and he's trying to kill still, isn't he? Yeah, so he's moved here. So what we want to do here is take over one of these locations. Now, what's interesting is that even though there's three locations to go here, so because it's a maze, you generate movement, and depending on how deep you go into the maze, you get a different reward. But it is always the same monster, okay? So if we spend six movement, we don't get any more fame than if we destroy a two movement, which has always seemed a bit weird for me. Now, as far as I know, the, the definitions of the greatest adventurer, yeah, the greatest adventurer, it doesn't make any distinction between the mazes. It's just plus two. So there's no advantage of spending all that extra movement for the, uh, we do win an artifact actually, which is worth something. Artifacts are worth for the greatest loot. So I guess that does help okay yeah so if we spend the movement we get an extra two points so let's try and do it why not let's take a blue oh that's my phone that's four five six that's easy enough so we've created our six movement and we've used our die so we're in the highest level Uh, and that means we take a dungeon thing. -o. You're blowing. Okay, so we have uh, one of my most hated cards. I don't like this card because it's it's uh, got fast. So it's actually 14 block for seven damage. That means out of a lot of the creatures that in the brown deck, they'll. Uh, they're damaging and stuff, but this one will knock you out even in, you know, sort of all the way to late early game. You know what I mean? Like by the end of the first day, it won't knock you out because you've already got a second shield. But when you've got two or even, well, you know, when you've got two armor, it can be really painful to draw this early when you're trying to boost yourself. But we shouldn't have too much a problem because we have got this dude. So the first thing we're going to do is use this thing here which will remove fast so now we're just dealing with a seven creature not an issue uh he's only five to kill and we can soul harvest him so that's attack three just by itself and we have another two attack here so that card alone kills him so now all we need to do is block him so we'll just go five we'll tap this guy get two mana tokens We'll just take a blue, get a second blue, which you don't need. And then I'll tap this one for six. And then I'll use this thing and that reduces his armor, uh, his attack by one. So to recap, we produced six move and got into the, the, the maze. 
Then we used this thing here to remove fast. So it was just seven attack, seven to block, I should say. Then we use taunt to reduce that by one. So it's now six to block. Then we tap this guy to give us a mana crystal. Well, we got two, we only needed one. We do a determination with five. Mana draw sideways is six. So that is now six block. And that's all we need to block this. Remember, this is six because we've reduced it by one. And then we just do soul harvest for three attack and use this thing here for plus two to five attack. Simple. And because it's soul harvest, we'll also get a white crystal after we kill him. Nice. So that is plus five. 48. Your block. And we also get an automatic artifact. We don't have to roll for it. And what do we have here? We've got a great blocker. Uh, this allows us to ready units. We may as well take that one, I guess. Just in case we have any opportunity to uh, do anything, <laughs> which I doubt. Blonk. And finally, this girl here who's a total mess. Okay, so she is on the last dungeon though. Blah, blah. Okay, so this is a pretty nasty one. It is 12 to block, plus it has paralyze. So if we get any damage, we are going to have to discard our hand. But we do have wings of wind. So target enemy does not attack this combat. So we'll just go tap. We'll pay with a black mana and a white crystal. And that that's the block sorted. Now we just need to produce the actual attack. And that shouldn't be too hard either. Because we have four fire attack three. So we have... Fire attack, th I just don't want to take a wound from this guy if I can help it. So what do we need? We need seven. So that's four, five, six, seven. So, hmm. Oh, well, I think I'll just take the wound. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to use a uh, this card here. Yep. Yeah. So this thing here generates a red mana token. So we're using that to pay for this. So it's attack four. We take a wound into our hand. That makes it attack nine, which is enough to kill him. But he has physical resistance and ice resistance, but it's not a problem because we actually have a fire gem, which converts that attack into a fire damage, which he is not resistance to. So we use wings of wind to stop him from attacking. And then we hit him for nine using the fire gem. And that is the end of that. Bammo. And that's another eight for him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's 51. And we do get to roll the whatever die. Ooh, we get a spell. And he's underground travel. Beautiful. Let's take that. That might come in handy. And yeah, that's that, isn't it? So I'll just take a dungeon marker. I'll also better mark the uh, maze as well. <laughs> Beautiful. Now, when you do mazes, you actually have to mark the correct path you took because uh, you can't actually do the same maze again, but other mages can do the, you know, the other tunnels. Okay, so that's that turn. Let's go straight to the next one. Uh, the question is, should I heal that wound? before I finish my turn. 
don't know. Yeah, I think I am. I'm going to heal that wound. Okay, boom. So we are drawing up to seven, but we have nothing in our deck. We'll activate Long Night. So this allows us to take three cards at random. Ooh, what could it be? Okay, so we basically have nothing. We have a total of Zippo. Can get to there. So what I might do is I'm gonna go two move. That takes us to the monastery. And then I'm gonna produce Uh, one, two, influence, and remember, we're also plus two. So that's actually four influence we've produced. And if I remember correctly, yeah. So you can heal for two influence at the monastery. So we can then use the four influence to heal those two wounds. And that's the end of his deck and turn. Meanwhile over here, still not a lot we can do here. So this guy, player, this dude here is going to declare the end of turn. So green, this bloke is going to get one more turn after this. So we may as well spend everything, all right? What have we got? Absolutely nothing up here of interest. Well, I'm going to go bam and I'm going to go bam. That's three movement. That gets me onto here. It's going to get me a green crystal at the end of the day. And then I'm also going to do this and use a blue. And I'm going to take a white crystal and then I'm going to put this back in my hand and discard a different card. Bammo. Okay, boom. What are you going to do for your final turn? Pretty much nothing. We do have a good movement card. Got some influence. We have a guy here so we can get in there and hire any high level units there's an eight unit here we're at zero rep so if we hired this we'd replace this one right i don't know if we can do this we'll just see uh first we need three movement to get in there we can just do this one two three that gets us in we actually produced four, but that we only need three. So we are whoop, over here. Then we go. There is no green. Oh, what? I forgot to use this. Gonna assign to a unit you control once around, except during combat. You may flip this card face down to red of the unit. So, yeah, we stick that on here. And then I'm just going to flip it over to ready this unit. And I'm going to get two more mana crystals. I'll take a green and I'll take a blue. I'll use the blue to pay for that. And then I'll use green. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Rep. Because remember, this is worth three. And we only need eight to hire this guy. So... It's got another high level unit. And that is that. And finally, your blammo. Space bending and underground travel. Oh, that's crazy. There's no blue mana up here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go underground travel with green. And then I'm gonna go space bending 
with uh, discarding this guy. That gives me a... Oh no, I wish... Oh, look at this. If only I didn't... Okay, so red equals blue. And I discarded my wound. So I couldn't produce a red mana. So I can't pay for space spending. Which is a real shame. I thought I could discard a card and then pay for space spending as well. That was a real bummer that I healed last turn. If I didn't do that, I would have been in a much better position. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to go underground travel. Move up to three revealed spaces. I was going to try... If I could have done that, I could have gotten over here and fought this and taken that location. But instead, I'm going to go two revealed spaces to here. Using underground travel. Move up to three revealed spaces on the map. You may not move through swamps or lakes, actually. So I can just go... What was I here? One... To, oh, yeah, I can still do that. So I can still move there. I just got to go around it. Whatever. The point is I've moved into that and it is a glade so I can heal some of these dirty wounds. Okay. Back over to you. He declares end of round. Back over to you. He's gonna. He's still on the green glade, so he gets another green crystal at the end of the turn. He's gonna pay mana bolt. He's still not gonna roll the source because he doesn't want to help anyone else. And oh wait, actually he's gonna roll the source because he wants a crystal of any kind. So he's gonna he's gonna roll the source and hope for a red or a blue. Okay, well, he gets a green. That's fine. So he'll pay with that, take another green, and then just discard all his cards. This bloke here, he's going to declare end of round. And this guy here is still on the glade. He's got nothing. He'll just discard and use one more turn to clear that wound and that's the end of his go as well and finally back to the dwarf and that is the end of the round okay so that is the end of the round all mage knights are accounted for Now, technically, in this game, there is another round. Uh, there's one more day, and this is the day that you usually spend fighting the other players, being, you know, really vicious, taking over their sites, knocking them out, and stuff like that. But I'm not going to bother doing that turn. Uh, what I might do is I'll leave it on night time so I can do the score calculation. And I'll do the score calculation next turn. Now the scoring in Dungeon Lords is pretty uh, simple. It's basically just the same as standard scoring, except there is a bonus for dungeons. So when scoring adventures, also count secret dungeons and tombs, or dungeons and tombs give four points instead of two. Instead of Great Adventure title, it's Greatest Dungeon Crawler title, and it's worth five points to have shared. So there's a lot of points in those dungeons. And uh, yeah, so I'll do the points and everything next turn, and I'll see you guys next time.